Hey guys, uh, Matt Paulson here. Uh, it's Friday afternoon. Um, I just finished my 16th and final meeting of the week. And it's been a really busy week, um, but it actually could have been actually busier. Um, there were probably another 10 meetings that I had to say no to this week because uh, I just didn't have time for them or they didn't fit into uh, the types of things that I'm you know, willing to take a meeting on. Um, I, I, what I'm finding as I, I become more successful in business and my name kind of gets out there more for writing books and being involved in the community. Um, there are just a lot of people that want my time and attention. And I don't think this is a unique problem to me. I think it's a problem that um, anybody whose name is kind of out there has. Uh, so whether you're a business leader, a community leader, a uh, politician, anything like that, um, where your name might be in a paper or um, lots of people know you for a specific thing, um, your name tends to come up a lot, and then that leads to a lot of uh, Facebook messages, LinkedIn messages, emails, just saying, hey, um, you know about whatever. Um, I would love to talk to you and learn about whatever. Uh, so for me, that's you know the startups, uh, business, um, entrepreneurship, anything like that. Um, you know, my name is the name that comes up in Sioux Falls when um, that topic comes up. So um, somebody says, oh, I think I want to start a business. Who should I talk to about that? Um, and then somebody would say, and inevitably say, oh, you should go talk to Matt. He knows a lot about business and, um, you know, totally fine with that. Um, but the reality is there are just more of those um, conversations that people would like to have than I realistically have time to do. Um, so for any given week, there's probably uh, 10 people that would like to have coffee and talk about business or talk about their nonprofit. Um, in addition to all the meetings that I have for, for Market Beat, for Falls Angel Fund, for the photo contest business, for the boards that I'm on, for ZEO, for the seminary, you know, it's a pretty long list. So for um, me to be able to take a meeting um, is not always the easiest thing to do uh, because I'm involved in, in so many different things. Um, so today in this video, I kind of want to share some of the criteria and the filters that I use um, about whether or not I will take a meeting with somebody. And then hopefully by sharing these filters, that will um, help you get the attention of any busy person that you want to get their attention of um, in, you know, at any point in the future. So if somebody wants a meeting with me, um, there are kind of four things that I, I use to evaluate, you know, is this a meeting that I want to take? Um, first, does it fit in any of my buckets? Does it fit in any of my buckets? So does the, the topic of the meeting or the person, does that fit into any of the things that I already care about? You know, do they want to talk about entrepreneurship, small business? Obviously, I care about that. You know, that's that's kind of a check in the positive column for somebody. Um, if it's kind of about a nonprofit topic and it's not an area that I'm uniquely interested in, you know, that might be a no. Uh, maybe somebody wants to have a conversation about starting um, a business in an industry that I don't know anything about, and I, I honestly just can't be helpful. Um, somebody wants to start a laundromat, I have no idea how to do that, don't know anything about real estate, don't know anything about washing machines, um, you know, I, I, I'm not your guy. Um, so if I'm not your guy, um, you know, it's probably going to be a no. Uh, it's just, there's no point in us having coffee because it takes an hour of my time and you don't learn anything, so that's going to be a no. But if, you know, you need help um, with a... Um, an email marketing problem, you know, like I'm, I'm probably the guy because I'm really good at that. Um, so, you know, that's that's kind of the first question is, is, does that fit into something that I know about and can help with and care about? And if it does, you know, I'm more likely to take that meeting. Uh, the second kind of filter that I use is geography. Um, I get a lot of requests from all over the world. Um, different, you know, yes, you know, I get people in Sioux Falls that want to meet or have me help with something. Um, but I also get these requests from just all over the place. Um, you know, I've written some books, um, and you know, because of that, and because of my blog and the interviews that I do, um, I get requests from people and just all everywhere. Um, you know, if if you're from Sioux Falls or from South Dakota, or you were from South Dakota, or you know somebody that I know in South Dakota, you know that's going to be a plus for you. But if you are, you know, several states away, another country. And we just have no real connection um, that ties us together. That's going to be probably a no. And I may not even respond to that email because there are so many of them. Um, like I get emails at least daily from companies um, in California, New York, looking to raise money, and they're just emailing every angel investor, venture capital person they can find on LinkedIn. You know, I, I typically don't even respond to those messages. So 
geography is a good filter because if they're around here, um, you know, I know that might be a more specific requests and that makes it an easier yes for me. So the third filter I use is, is there an existing personal connection? So do we know any of the same people? And it's really easy to find that out. So you can just look at um, the Facebook profile of somebody and look for mutual friends. You can look at LinkedIn and look at mutual connections and just, you know, do we know any of the same people? And if it turns out that we know 10 of the same people and they're all good people, you know, that might be a safe assumption for me to think, hey, maybe you're good people too and I should meet with you. But if there are no kind of existing personal connections, we don't know any of the same people, you know, that might, you know, it's probably a, a check in a no column for me. And then finally, um, the, the last filter I use is, you know, is there going to be something in this conversation for me? Um, if I have coffee with you, um, you, you have to bring more to the table than I'll buy you coffee because realistically, I can buy my own coffee. I don't need you to buy me coffee. Um, but if we can have an interesting discussion about a topic that I care about, uh, that would be good. Uh, maybe you can teach me about something that I don't already know about. Maybe you can uh, int introduce me to somebody that I would like to meet. Um, typically, it's, it's not money that you provide the value with because you know I'm not a consultant. I don't do the time for money thing. Um, but you know maybe there's some other way to add value to me, which makes me more interested in, in adding value to you. Um, you know my best business relationships. There's always a mutual exchange of value. Um, whether it's money, whether it's uh, relationships, whether it's information, uh, friendship, it's got to be something, you know, you, you can't just say, I want to have coffee from you so that you can teach me about this and give this to me so it helps me. Uh, there's got to be a, a two-way two -way thing going on. You have to provide value to the person you want to pitch in some way. So those are kind of my four filters. One, um, does the meeting kind of fit into any of my buckets for things that I care about? Two, is the person from around where I'm at? Um, third, is there an existing personal connection? And fourth, is there anything at all in it for me? Uh, so if you can kind of fit those four criteria, you know, I'm much more likely to um, have coffee or take a meeting with somebody. Um, you know, those, those are the criteria that I use, uh, but certainly um, there are some lessons that you can use to pitch if you're going to pitch anybody. So let's say that there is a business owner, um, large community-based business, has 100 employees, uh, they're obviously a busy person, but let's say you have an opportunity for them and you want to get their attention. How do you do it? Um, the first thing that you really should try to get is a warm introduction. So if you can have a mutual friend introduce you, um, that is help, super helpful. Uh, because if my banker, Corey, says, hey, Matt, um, I would like you to meet ex you know, this person, um, then by taking that meeting, I am doing a, a favor for my friend and banker, Corey. Um, that's helpful to him. Um, so I'm much more likely to say yes than if it's just somebody coming off the street and asking for help. Um, so, so just f figure out who that mutual person is that can make that introduction. Then you can you just say, hey, would you please make an email introduction? Um, I would love to talk to this person about this subject. Um, so by that mutual connection is, is really key. That's probably the best thing that you can do to get that meeting. Um, second, uh, if you're going to make a request of somebody, um, you know, over email, LinkedIn, Facebook Messenger, whatever it is, just be very specific about it. Um, say, you know, don't say, hey, would you be my mentor? That's like the worst thing you can ask because that can mean so many different things. Um, but if you say, hey, person, um, I know that you are the CEO of this company with 100 employees in this industry. Um, I would love to learn more about this industry and um, some different opportunities in that industry. Would you be available for a 30 minute phone conversation at a time of your convenience to discuss that question mark? Um, you know, that is a very specific request. The person knows exactly what they're signing up for by saying yes. And by being more specific, you're more in your request, you're more likely to get that yes. Um, third, um, just make sure there's something in it for them. Um, same thing I talked about with kind of the relationships that I try to build. Um, you know, maybe you can teach them about something, you can uh, make an introduction for them, anything like that, where you can provide them value. You can help with them with something in their business. Um, try to give them value first before you ask them for something. Um, then fourth, you know, you do have to be kind of persistent. Um, I can't respond to every email that I get or every message that I get. I just, there's not enough time in the day to do that. Um, so, you know, I might ignore the first message if it's, you know, doesn't kind of fit some of my boxes, but if there's you know, a second message or a third message, um, you know, that, um, you know, tells me you're serious. So 
Um, so it, yeah, I mean, people, you know, people that are, are busy who you're trying to get their attention, um, they might they might miss you at first time. That's just the reality. Um, I do a good job of staying on top of my inbox, but not everybody does. So if they see a second message from you saying, "Hey, name, um, I sent you a message a week ago. I would really love to meet. I think I can provide you value with X, Y, Z, and maybe you can teach me about A, B, C." Um, you know that second, that third message. Um, by showing that persistence, you're much more likely to get that meeting. Um, so if you're making that ask, um, four kind of things. One, get that warm intro. Be specific in your request. Um, make sure there's something in it for them, and then just show some persistence in your request. Obviously, don't be annoying, but um, if they don't respond right away, send them an email a week later, and do it a week later. Then maybe after that third email, if they still don't respond, take a different approach, or you know at that point move on to somebody else. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Uh, hopefully it will kind of show you um, how to get the attention of somebody who's busy, successful, important, whatever. Uh, I think that's all I got, so I'll see you guys in the next video I do sometime.